the intercontinental Destroyed, they actually think that this is normal. This is not normal. You know, it's not normal to be out here with trash all over the place. You got bullet holes at the bus stop, you got people passed out, either drunk or on drugs. This is not normal. This is a bad condition. So, why do we live like this? The brother's gonna show you. Just give him a few minutes, show him why we curse so he can understand the importance of knowing who you are, and more importantly, what we can do to lift these curses because that's what he's teaching. What you gonna do in the kingdom? First John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the law. You get it? So transgression means to break. You understand? So when you go against God's laws, that means you're doing what? You're breaking God's laws. That means you're in what? In the midst of sin. Because sin is breaking God's laws, right? So when you break God's laws, that means you're in the midst of sin, right? Give me uh, Romans 6.23. Let's see what happens if you're in the midst of sin. Because what they tell you is you can sin and just say you believe on God and you'll be okay. That's what's being taught in the earth. And that's a lot. Because this is what God says what happens to people that sin. Bring it out. Right? Go ahead, bring it. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Uh -huh. For the wages. The wages. You know what wages are, right? When you go on your job, you get paid wages, right? So wages is payment. So God said, for the payment of what? Of sin. Of breaking my laws is what? Is death. See that? So God said, if you break my laws, I'm going to die. Not you can break my laws and say, forgive me, Lord. God said, if you continue to break my laws, you're going to die. Bring it out. That's what's, that's what's being said in the Bible. Now in the earth, we know that's not being published. Everybody in the earth is saying, you know, just do what you gotta do and, and, and say sorry. Make sure you pray, make sure you tithe, make sure you go to church on Sunday, and guess what, you're gonna make it to heaven. Read that again. For the wages of sin. God said, if you break my laws, I'm gonna pay you with what? Is death. Is death. God said, break my laws, I'm gonna pay you in death. That's what it is. Give me Deuteronomy 225. Because you gotta understand, this is a law. When God says thou shalt, he's commanding you. That's a law. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman. The woman shall not. So when God says shall not, what he say? He commands you not to do it. Right? Go ahead. Where that which pertaineth unto a man. So a woman on the earth should not be an Israelite woman. Right? Because you gotta understand this. The laws of God were only given to the children of Israel. They weren't given to the white woman. They weren't given to the Asian woman, the Japanese woman. They can do what the hell they want to do. But you, God said, you gotta follow this. Because he chose you. Remember you read the scripture? He said, I chose you and make you above everybody. So God specifically gave these laws to you. Nobody else. Okay? Get that? 
Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So a woman's not supposed to wear that which pertains unto a man. And for lack of, lack of, you know what I'm saying, people don't understand that standards. Okay? Because women, even back in the 1940s in America, it was against the law for women to wear clothes. You understand? They considered it impersonating a man. They would lock you up for that. You understand what I'm saying? Not until the women's rights movement that they said, oh, now women can wear pants. And then they start cutting them different for y'all. You understand what I'm saying? But you still have a zipper in the front. What you going, what you pulling out? What you got a zipper for in the front for? No reason at all. You understand? Go ahead. For all that do so are abomination. It says all that do so are an abomination. Abomination is something detestable, grotesque. Something you want to throw up on. You understand what I'm saying? God said for all that do so. So men that wear dresses and wears women's uh, garments, it's an abomination. Men or women that wear men's garments is an abomination to God. You understand that? We put a dress code. Like we got men out here like the way waiting on the brothers wearing dresses and stuff now. We got brothers like Young Thug and they're wearing dresses. You know what I'm saying? We got women out here that's wearing tight pants showing their curves and now they want to be like, uh, they want uh, sympathy when a brother treats them dirty. Or they want sympathy when a brother rapes them. You did that to yourself. You put that, you put that on that man. Yeah. You showed all your curves to that man. Yeah. Now guess what? He enticed, he lusted, yeah. he burnt. Yeah. He want to try that thing. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what happens when women show their curves to men. That's why God said the Israelite woman is supposed to cover up. Get that first thing. You got a phone? Put your phone up. Why don't you look up a definition of phone? It's all? Can't look up nothing? First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Uh -huh. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. God said that in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. You know what the word adorn means? Adorn? Yeah. A little bit? Okay, let's see. Read that. What's adorn mean? What is that? It says to make more beautiful. See that? So what God say? Read it again. In like manner also that women adorn themselves or make themselves more beautiful. How? In modest apparel. In modest apparel. Let's look up modest. You want to see what modest means? Because our people don't understand the words. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? God said to make yourself more beautiful in modest apparel. Okay? Let's look it up. Alright. You come from. It says the term modest fashion, modest dress, refers to a a uh, fashion when women are wearing less skin rebellion or clothes, especially in a way that satisfies their spiritual uh, stylistic requirements for a question of faith, religion, or person. You understand? So it's saying to cover up. Okay? Modest means, modest means to dress in a way that doesn't attract sexual attention. You understand what I'm saying? So God said it again. Read it again. In like manner also that women adorn themselves Make themselves more beautiful, how? In modest apparel. In clothes that don't attract sexual attention. You understand? So women out here wearing leggings, which is underwear, by the way. They out here wearing leggings in the open. Women out here wearing tight jeans to show off their curves. God said that's not attractive. They taught you that's attractive. But what that does is cause brothers to sin, to look at you in lust. Guess what? Now they in trouble. Now you don't know what kind of spirit you put on them. They might, they might turn around and follow you home. They might stalk you now. Because they seen the curvature of your body and they like that. You understand? To, to protect yourself, God said, do it again, read it again. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves uh -huh. in modest apparel. Cover yourselves up, sisters. But what they got out here? They got women teaching you, uh, uh, what? What's that? You know, uh, Cardi B? Yeah, a lot of women. But listen, you may seem like that, right? But guess what? A lot of women is following that. Bring it up. 
a lot of women out here trying to get that wop on their brothers. You understand? But guess what she said? She said, I'm not gonna let, she's not gonna let her daughter listen to it. So what's that telling you? We shouldn't listen to it. Our women shouldn't listen to it. You shouldn't let your daughter, you got kids? If you get a kid, you shouldn't let your kid listen to it. Bring it up! You understand? But a lot of our women out here are letting their daughters listen to that mess. And guess what? It's causing a hoarding. It's causing our women to grow up and hoard. You understand what I'm saying? Is that all your head? That's your natural head? No? You see what I'm saying? Give me Proverbs. Because a lot of our women, and it's not, I'm not getting on this. I'm just showing you that. No, no, it's okay. Listen, it's, okay. it's going to feel like that. Why? Because they've been lying to you and we're taking you the truth. You understand? The truth is going to make you free. You understand what that, Wake what that up. means? That means that all the lies you've been told, once you hear the truth, you're going to feel some type of way. Why? Because you've been lied to all your life. You've been told that your natural hair is beautiful. That's why you don't see no white women, no Asian women, no China, none of them women going into the beauty salon and buying woolly hair. They don't buy afros and put them on their head. They don't do that. They get, they, they get straight hair and they get the style. They get braids. Okay? That's just a conversation trying to be like you. But we the only people on the earth, all women, are the only ones that go into a salon and get straight white hair to look like they're oppressed. Bring it out. Because they were told all their life that their hair is not beautiful. God gave you a dress code. He gave you how to deal with each other. He told you how to do all these things. But what happened is our people turned away from it. They rather be like the oppressor. You rather ask the white man for a handout than tell him, no, nah, God got me. Go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13 and verse 3. Listen to this, sis. With, whose, with whose beauty, uh -huh. if they being delighted, took them to be gods. So the other nations seen our beauty and took us to be gods. You understand that? They used to look on us and say, yo, them people got to be gods. You understand that? We was looked at as gods on the earth. Go ahead. Let them know how much better 
the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty had created them. So God is the one that created the ones on the earth that look like God. You understand? The first author of beauty is God. He made you to be beautiful, sis. But God said you're not beautiful in pain. God said you're beautiful covered up. You know. You understand? God, because why? Give me Hebrews 13 and 4. Because this is what you should be striving for. But this is not what's taught in our community. <laughs> understand that, go ahead. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable in no, all. Baby daddies and baby moms. Marriage is honorable in all. Boyfriend and girlfriend. Marriage is honorable in all. But see, they not teaching the Bible like this. God said that a man and a woman should be married. Not That's sleeping right. around, having sex with different partners and all that. Right. Now don't get it twisted, sis. A lot of us out here have been like that. You understand that. But a lot of us now have repented and got married. Bring it out. You understand? And married our sisters. And not whore them out like these brothers do in the street. Why they have all our sisters out here wearing leggings and tight clothes and showing their boobs and all this stuff like this. Why? Because they out there searching for the next ride to jump on. But they not, they not honoring marriage. We now have the low, lowest two-parent home in the black community. When we used to have the highest. You understand? But the enemies did, they had plans to take you out of the house, black man. And now, put the black woman up above you. When God said that the man is ahead of the woman, the woman are ahead of the kids. Christ is ahead of the man and God is ahead of Christ. That's the order. Why have we fallen from that order? Why have we fallen from that order? And it's mess because, like I said, the white man told you it's mess. Because the white man told you the Bible. When we teach you the real scriptures, we teach you how the Bible's supposed to be taught. Let me ask you this, sis. Is Christ white or black? He's black in your mind, right? Did you know that it's in the Bible? Did you know that it's in the Bible? Give me that revelation. He black in your mind? What's your heart? Uh -huh. What's your heart according to God? That's what we here for. You understand that? Because you can't ask these questions at church. I guarantee you, you can't. I guarantee you, you cannot ask these questions at church. You go up there and ask your pastor any of your questions you got for us today, he gonna tell you to sit down and shut up in a polite manner. Go ahead. Revelation chapter one and verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revealing of Jesus the Christ. Understand that. Not the so-called white man, but we're going to see what he looked like according to the scriptures. Go ahead. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Christ had woolly hair, right? It said his hair was like unto texture of wool. You look at some of my brothers. Most of my brothers around here, you see what? Look at your hair. You got what? Woolly hair. Sis, you got woolly hair, right? Go ahead. As white as snow. As white as snow. So in color, it was white. Okay? So it was woolly, and then the color of it was white. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Christ's eyes, the white of Christ's eyes were red. You know what I'm saying? Like a darkest red. You feel me? They was in that because it was prophesied that, he, that his eyes would be white with wine in Genesis 49. Understand that. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine brass. Your feet, sis. Your feet. Your feet, brother. They're in the same color as the rest of your body, the top of your feet, right? Okay. It said what? And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown, right? It says it's brown, right? Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they what? As if they burned in a furnace. So if you take anything and burn it in a furnace, what color do you get? You get black, right? So Christ was already brown, but it was as if he burned in the furnace. So what? Christ was a really dark-skinned man. That's what the scriptures say. So where did we get this from? Why when you type in Jesus on Google, this image pops up? Wake him up! Why? Revelation chapter 13. And verse 15, uh -huh. and he had power. And he had power. Who's he that had power? 
Who got power right now? Who runs the earth? God? Who runs us right now in this civilization? God. Who we put in power then? Who did God put in power? Right? Bring it out! Please! The white people. The white man runs the world. No, he runs the world. He runs your world. You living in D.C.? He runs that. Bring it out! The, hey, the white man runs D.C., bro. Where you live at? Exactly. Who you pay taxes to? Exactly. My point exactly. They don't know what you say. All of us. Exactly. I'm not. Listen. Listen. The white man runs the world, though. And I'm not saying I'm a prophet, and I know that. You understand what I'm saying? You can't be mad at that. I'm not. He runs the world. It's facts. God set up the white man to run the world right now. Why? Because he's gonna come back and smack the white man down. Understand that? Read that. And he had power. And he had power. The white man had power. What? To give life. Unto the image of the beast. He had power to give life to the image of the beast, which is the so-called white man posing as Jesus. That's the image of the beast. So you mean to tell me God would God put this up when God said that his son is black? No, the white man put this up. Bring it out! That's the he that had power to give image to the life of the beast. Go ahead. That the image of the beast should both speak. Uh-huh. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So when they first came over here, right? When the conquistadors came over here and found this place, the natives were already over here, right? Guess what? They was holding the cross to their face saying, accept this or die. And they were burning them alive. When we, when we came over here on the ship, they said, accept white Jesus or die. And they hung us on trees. Facts. This is factual stuff that happens. But our people don't like to acknowledge the facts. You can't hide that. It happened to us. And guess who did it? The white man. That's, That's right. We're so scared to talk on that man. He out here killing us in the street, and we out here to speak on it. That's crazy. The white man didn't kill us during slavery? You shake your head, no. Come on, don't put it like that. I was born in 1907. Exactly. Anything past but you have to know the history. That don't make sense, brother. You got to know the facts and history. So, 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 what I'm saying is, so, brother, like you said, you got to know the facts and history. Regardless if you was there or not, because obviously none of us was in slavery getting our butts with. But, but, we are the descendants of it. Bring it out. No, it happened to our sisters, our ancestors. I know it happened to my great grandmother, my great grandfather. I know that for a fact. No matter if I was there or not. Right, so let's right, stop playing right, semantics right. and know that the white man is the one that did it. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.